Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. Wine is a mocker. Well, we've been talking about mockery. We've been talking about people that scorn. Here is a beverage that's a mocker. Why? Because you act like an idiot. Strong drink. There's alcohol. Can't find alcohol in the Bible. There it is. Strong drink is raging. You get foolish anger. Stupid. And whosoever. That's interesting. Whosoever. For God so loved the world, he gave he, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that's addressing everybody. Whosoever addressing anybody and everybody. Saved or lost. Is deceived. You're deceived by alcohol. Thereby is not why. Oh, I'm a Christian. I have moderate wine. I'm a, you're not why. Rwanda was the only state to reject the 18th Amendment. Beer is made by the fermentation caused by the bacteria in feeding on yeast cells and then pooping. I had to poop. Beer is made by yeast pooping. In, school, in Cold Spring, Pennsylvania, there was a time that a married man could not buy liquor without a written consent from his wife because the family would suffer. There's one way for the government to get rid of alcoholism, get rid of DUI. Absolutely, completely get rid of the alcohol beverage. But, you know, you can tax it. And when you tax alcohol and lives are destroyed, God's going to hold you accountable for it. You can't drink and drive, but they'll ask you for your driver's license for identification to buy liquor. Only in America. It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. Stop fighting. Get it over with. Make peace. But every fool will be meddling. I forgot verse 2. So let's verse three real quick. Go back to verse two. Just stop fighting. Oh, we're going to keep what we're going to, then you're a fool. You're not wise in verse one. Verse two, I forgot. The fear to, the fear of a king, second advent, the Lord Jesus Christ, as a roaring lion, lion of the tribe of Judah, whoso provoketh him to anger. Sin it against his soul. The lost man has got Jesus Christ angry at the second advent, the goat. Not visible. Um, John said, He that has the Son, Jesus Christ, has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Where he did verse 3, verse 4. The sluggard won't do nothing, will not plow by reason of the cold. It's too cold to go out in the field. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. You don't plant nothing, you don't, you don't fill the ground, you're not going to get no fruit. And you're going to have to beg. Because you were too lazy to go out in the field. Counsel. Getting advice from people. In the heart of man is like deep waters. Alright. That deep waters. We, we read about that earlier. Go back to chapter 18 verse 4. Proverbs 18 4. The words of a man's mouth are as deep water, a wellspring of wisdom, as a flowing brook. But a man of understanding will draw it out. Scripture with scripture. 
You know, we've been seeing a mouth as a wicked, vile thing, but we can also see a mouth as a wise thing. It is the utmost wise thing to get counsel from the right people. I would not get counsel from a modern Bible. I would not get counsel from a liberal. I would not get counsel from a Catholic church. I would make sure that a pastor of a church is sound in doctrine. I would make sure that the Christian reads and studies his Bible and prays before I got counsel. Most men, not all, will proclaim everyone his own goodness. So, as I preach on the streets of Daytona Beach, one of the number one top ten things that people will come up to me and say, oh, I'm good. There's that verse. And the Bible says there is none that do it good. I'm good. But a faithful man who can find. That's a bold statement, Solomon. More people out there, hey, <coughs> excuse me, I'm good. Try to find that faithful man out there. That's hard. It's hard to find a faithful man in church. The just man walketh in his integrity. It's your holiness. It's your soundness. It's you got wisdom, you got understanding, you got knowledge. His children are blessed after him. They're, they're happy because they got a smart dad. And I don't mean smart, educated. I mean, their father has a bearing of reality. He can be trusted. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scatters away evil with his eyes. That, that's second advent. But I'm also not going to say it's second advent because it says sitteth on his throne. And when Jesus Christ comes back, he's not sitting on his throne yet, but he'll be on his way to his throne. And if that is a millennial passage, then there will be evil in the millennium that will be judged by the kings, by the lords, by the apostles, by the Levites, by the Prince David, and then by Jesus Christ. Moses set up a, a judicial system in the children of Israel. Cap, uh, uh, judges of hundreds and fifties. And there was no, if there was a cause that was higher than, I mean, you cannot get the proper judgment. And while Moses was living, you were to go to Moses. And when Moses died, you were to go to the Levites and they would go to God. That's what's going to happen in millennium. You're going to have Christians who are kings, uh, Revelation chapter 1. They're going to have cities of rain. And if there is conflict in your city as king, it will be brought to your attention. Because the Bible says kings are to be judges. Not presidents. Hopefully I will get a part of an inheritance in the millennia. I'm not going to be a president. I'm going to be a king. And if by chance that judgment of my inheritance becomes too hard, going to probably bring it to one of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And there may be even a Lord under the king. So there's Lord of Lords. 
And then the apostles, if it really such a matter, evidently, I don't know what the order will be, but it will be brought up to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that in the millennia, the Dead Sea is a fire. But that second advent of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, Revelation 19, his flame of fire coming out of his eyes. That's not that lamb no more. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. Your typical average Christian today, that's me. And I say to that typical average Christian, you don't read your Bible. Who can say, I have made my heart clean? My heart's clean. I didn't do it. If I'm going to run to a Bible verse, my heart is clean. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just the forgiving my sins to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's how I'm clean. I didn't do nothing. You're looking at a religious person there. And as I said before, they'll come up to you. I'm good. Well, you're not good enough. And that's what they're saying when they come up to you and say, I'm good, or I'm Catholic, or I'm fill in the blank. I'm clean by what I am. I am pure from my sin. Yeah, when I confess my sins, he forgives me my sins and cleanses me from my sin. That sounds good, right? Where are we in the Bible? Jesus Christ has not even been born yet. Never mind death, burial, and resurrection, and John writing to us, John, 1 John 1, 9. That hasn't even happened. Who in the Old Testament can say, I have made my sin, my, my heart clean? I am pure from my sin. No one. Zilch. Even if I did, even if I was in the law and I did bring the sacrifice, and I were to die under the law, if I was back in the law in the Old Testament, and I were to die pleasing God, I didn't go to heaven. I went to Abraham's bosom. I didn't. I didn't get out of paradise, Abraham's bosom, to Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried and rose again on the third, the third day. When the blood, and when Jesus became our sins and the blood was shed, that's the freedom of Abraham's bosom. That's what set me free. Diverse, that's various different kinds. Weights, diverse measures. You mean metric in American? You mean teaspoons and... Millimeters? We're a Christian nation. And yet we got to have a standard soccer set and we got to have a metric soccer set. We got to have a built screwdriver, we got to have a flat nose screwdriver, and then we got to have these little other weird screwdrivers. So you have to go out and buy more tools so you can fix your car. Both of them, weights and measures, of them are alike. Abomination to the Lord. I'm going to say it. Sodomy is abomination of God. Yep. Sodomites, lesbians, homosexuality, bestiality. So when you deceive somebody that when they get three gallons of gasoline, they got two 
point ninety nine 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 nine. Aren't you glad that time stops at the Great White Throne Judgment? That when the owners of gasoline pumps are going to have to give an account when you did not get what you paid for. Well, it, it, it said three gallons. But Jesus Christ will bring it off. Was it three gallons? Exactly. The one that said, man shall give an account of every idle word. You're going to have to give an account for every three gallons. How about this one? You got 3.1 gallons and you pay for three gallons. You shortchanged the guy. That's almost like a thing which is obsolete today, growing up as a child. And we know today, we went, to the favorite thing we used to do, go up to a payphone, put our finger in the coin slot, and oh, we got a dime. And we were rich when we hit a quarter. And we used to say, finders, keepers, lose your weepers. You know what the law said? The same law that says, man shall not pertain where what pertains to a woman, a woman shall not pertain with man where a man where. That's not in the New Testament. You know what the law says? Thou shalt not print any marks upon your body for the dead. That's not in the New Testament. All right, so we want to say that women can't wear pants and we can't have any tat which you're wrong, okay? But the law also said if you found something, you were supposed to hold it or go try to find the owner thereof. To say finders, keepers, lose your weepers was actually a sin. You know, these treasure hunters, they go down and they find these shipwrecks and they keep the money and the gold. That's not theirs. You most likely know the name of that ship and everything about that ship. That's not, you're supposed to go find the owners. All the stuff that you've gotten from the White Star Lines of the Titanic has sunk at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. That's not yours. That belongs to the White Star Line. But the pastor will worry about, you know, a woman's not to wear pants. Okay. I want to see you next week in church in a skirt, carrying a purse. Because that's what the men wore, and that's what the disciples had. Jesus said, you know, carry no script and no purse. David had a shepherd's bag. And then you turn around, well, you know, we're not going to wear a veil like the Muslim women. Uh, Rebecca put a veil on. Rachel had a veil. How come we're taking the Bible what we like and what we don't like? I don't know how I got off on that, but. When you've got different measurements and you are shortchanging your customer, or your customers are shortchanging you, saved or lost, you're going to give an account to God, and it's called an abomination. I said, we're, I, I'm going to eventually, hopefully, Lord willing, I got a great one about the Bible coming up, but I may do a study on abomination. Because I want to do, because I probably, somewhere in the Bible, the abomination, I might be doing something that's abominable. I hope not, but. I didn't realize how much of a fool I was through I did a fool study. Every, uh, excuse me, even a child is known by his doing. Kids over here sucking his thumb. Well, he's a child. He did a poop in his diaper. He's a child. Look, he's sleeping in church. He's a child. 
whether his work be pure. Pure. A child can be pure. And whether it be right. Pure is higher than right. Pure will equal right. So then you look at a child. Oh, that's a good boy. Oh, yeah, he, he, he knows his Bible verse. He brought his Bible to church. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. I mean, polite. Respectable. So let's... What about an adult? Man falls asleep in church. That's not childlike. There's no certain circumstances. When I work, used to work third shift on Sunday mornings, I'd get home at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, I'd take a power nap, and I'd go to church, and sometimes I would fall asleep during church. And then there's elderly people, okay, you know, they're getting tired, and I'm with it. I mean, you look at them, but what about your average adult? I don't read the Bible. Why not? I don't pray. Why not? That child over there is behaving himself. Yeah, you are not. And you are an adult. The hearing ear. And the seeing eye. Nothing about the talking mouth. The Lord has made even both of them. You mean it didn't evolve? You mean when I was at one single amoeba in the oogie boogie boogoopy block, and I said to myself, I was the only one, I think I'm going to be a two cell. Boing. And then I became a three cell. Boing. And then whatever that. And I say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of being in the water. I'm going to step out on that beach and I'm going to start walking. Where did the ear and the mouth and the eye come from? What's evolution going to say about that? All living has eyes and ear. A tree is living, they don't have an eye or ear. There's these little mole rats. They're blind as anything. There are animals that are blind and have other features that gets them around. There are animals that are, are deaf. And there are animals that have keen eyesight and a keen ear, ear sight. How does evolution explain that? I can explain it. God made it. And Solomon's like, I don't even want to touch the mouth. Because we've been looking bad counsel to the mouth. But God made that too. Love not sleep. Chapter 19, verse 15. Slothful casteth into a deep sleep, and idle so shall suffer slunger. Slung, ah, hunger. I said snooze alarm. I'm guilty. Snooze. 15 minutes more. Bible says no. Open thy eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Go to work. That matches with verse four, the slugger who won't do nothing. It is not. It is not. It is nothing. Verily, look at that. Verily, verily. Very, very saying to you. It is not. It is not. 
It is nothing. It is nothing. Say it to buyer. First time buyer shows up in the Bible. It's nothing. Have you ever been at a flea market or anything like that? You see, that's absolutely nothing. You can you, you want you want to sell me that for that, and it's broken. There's 50 of them. Guy over there at the table has three of them. But when he is gone his way, then he boasts. It. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> I got it for a dollar. You know what I would pay for this at the store? I'd pay five bucks. I bought this off that guy's table over there for five bucks. I just sold it off my table for ten. That's what that verse is saying. There is a there is gold and a multitude of rubies. And we know that the virtue of woman, her price is above those rubies. But the lips, uh-oh. Here we go. Of knowledge, oh, are a precious jewel. Whoa. Now, Scripture is Scripture. You recognize where you'll find gold? Will you recognize where you will find precious stones? When you take your mouth out and, and give the people the gospel, and people get saved because you give them the words of knowledge of God and the Holy, and they get saved. That's a precious stone. That's a pearl. You know what a pearl is? A pearl is a living stone. When you have planted or watered and God gave the increase, your labor of them eventually getting saved. Get you precious stone because you use your lips of knowledge. It doesn't say anything about movie. Lips of knowledge is, well, come to my church Sunday morning. That's not lips of knowledge. That's a lazy preacher that wants to get the benefits of your labor. Oh, my preacher's going to give them goat food, and if they get saved, and that's credited to the preacher because you didn't have the lips of, the lips of knowledge and I'll come to my church Sunday morning. You benefit your church, not Jesus. I don't care if you don't like what I've said. That's Bible. And if you don't like it, get mad at God in the Bible, not me. And you're going to throw your weight around with me. I, I, I told today, I, I will start putting your name, the date, and quotes. And I, as Peter, as Paul... As Jude, as Moses, and as Jesus. I'm going to start naming names and, say, and tell the people what you did and what you said. That's biblical. And I will quote it. Or I will say something to the benefit that they said. And, I, and I'm going to put the date, and if I can, I'm going to put the time down. And he, I'm going to say, why don't you read your Bible for her? Because it's in the Bible. Is 
The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. How do you preach? We put a movie in there. No, that's not how you do it. Well, we haven't come to church. That's not. That's not. The Bible says, go into the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say, bring them to the church and preach the gospel. Check that amongst the Greek. I'm getting, I'm getting very, the Lord showed me a lot of knowledge and wisdom with the studies I'm doing lately. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. How do you preach the gospel? With the lips. Look at, let's go to Romans chapter 10. We'll close. I'll show you what I'm talking about, what the Bible says. And if you don't like it, then you tell God you got a problem. Oh, I don't like Stiley. That's okay. And Jesus will tell you one day why he persecuted out of me. No, Stiley said it. No, Stiley said what my word said. Uh, verse number 13. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever... Wow, look at that. I wasn't going to do Romans 10 today, but look at that. Shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Getting to see Proverbs? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Uh huh, see, bring them to church. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. If you go in the gospel, if you go in the world and preach the gospel, guess what you are? You're a preacher. And that didn't cost you nothing. How shall they preach except they be sent? How are they sent? Go in all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> Do. And as it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace. How can you get your feet if you tell them to come to church or come listen to this movie? What are your feet doing? They're not walking, carrying the gospel. Got to open your mouth for the Lord. 